Noble young adventurers in search of a dragon's gold. Maybe not that noble, maybe not that bold. And as this song will soon relate, they didn't get that old. <laughs> now, what I've gained a lot back in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, and actually most of the 80s, um, my primary system was RuneQuest. In RuneQuest, you can do pretty much anything you want. Uh, you can learn magic, you can use armor, you can do all those goodies. You can join a religion, uh, a cult, and appeal to your god through the mechanism of divine intervention. Uh, a premium of rubber rule says DI. Remember that. Their leader was the fiend, the black she fought with double swords. She wiped her feet on double tops and hummed with mighty lords. There was also a dwarf named Bristol, quite a strong and ugly lump. So short and wide and thick as high, he was called the Bristol Stump. <laughs> Now Pip, the drunken druid, was the party's magic power. He spent his days in a bourbon haze through every waking hour. And for Delphine's affections, fought with very ghosts of vain. A pretty boy elf with a dandy accent, a thing for causing pain. <laughs> Their battle plan was simple, they would all have them to wire. And Pip, disguised as an ice cream man, would quench the dragon's fire. They'd tear off his arms and legs in a daring crumble raid. And if that didn't work, well, they always had the holy hand grenade. <laughs> so they started off for the dragon's cave, its treasures for to take. But halfway there, the birds flew off and the ground began to shake. They heard a roar and a terrible crash, and they all turned round to see the dragon right behind them cleaning its nails on a tree. And they ran through the rambles, and they ran through the fires, and they ran through the moon, and they ran through the moon, and they ran through the moon, sorry. <laughs> It's a divine intervention, hey, that's always worth a try. Oh, Mother Goddess, save our hides, we beg you for D.I. Now true gods have always had a wit that's rather dry. So a dozen guys in green and black fell out of a clear blue sky. They landed with a mighty elf of landing hurts a lot. But when they saw the dragon, all their pain was quite forgot. They hollered, what a challenge! And they hid behind some trees. And they all whipped out their laser guns and blew away his knees. Now our heroes were in front of it, as you may well recall. And when its legs were vaporized, they knew where it would fall. Now Biff had a chance to save this one, and it caused them awful pain. To choose who lived, whether Bristol, whether Delphine, or whether Bane. <laughs> <laughs> then he pushed Delphine to safety and not Paris' to her. And when the dragon hit the elf, he was shorter than a smurf. Now Bristol the dwarf was weighted down by all that stupid wire. And he got crushed to dwarven slimes, so and now he's Bristol Meyer. <laughs> well, that's nothing. The sound effect was squib. <laughs> <laughs> Delphine and Biff, the drunken druid, stand up a thankful prayer, and thought of all the dragon gold the two of them would share, till they remembered all those warriors wondering what to do, and then that balmy druid said, we're friendly, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you ask adventurers, they'll always say the same, don't ever bother dragons, nothing adventured, nothing gained. And never trust the druid gods, nor beg them for D.I. Cause you might get to my intervention, and you just might get your side. <laughs> <laughs>